Ashlight is part of Complete 14 by Native Instruments. Straylight and Farlight were the first two contact sounds to work with granular synthesis and Ashlight is now the deep side of granular synthesis. <laughs> My name is Thomas Foster and in this video I'll show you everything you need to know to use the Ashlight, control it with controllers or automations and program your own sounds. Good to have you here, let's go! To load the Ashlight you need the plugin Complete Control and you click here and find it in this list. Uh, here it is. And the other possibility is to use the contact player. I use the contact player because then you can see here which keys I am playing. So this is Ashlight and the first thing you want to do is maybe to load a sound. For this you click here on the sound that is loaded and then here you have all the presets of Ashlight. You can filter them so we can say I would like to have a pet sound or something pulses um, and what else do we want? We want a heart sound, all right, with a little dramatic. And now crack the code. Drama pulse. Maybe a nice sound, maybe we stay with this. Okay, what else do we see here? The, the most sounds have two sound sources. That's grain and sample. Sample is a normal sample player. We can listen to them separately by muting them. So grain is on now. I click on the white dot and now we just hear the sample. We can change the volume. And now we listen to the grain, which is the granular sound of Ashlight. And the most sounds are a combi of a grain sound and a sample sound. You also see here the waveform and the sample sound is using an arpeggiator. That's why it's always starting from scratch and the grain sound is walking around like a grain sound is doing this, right? All right, uh, you have here four macros. So for example, the high cutoff, so that's a high pass filter, a low pass filter called low pass cutoff, a delay and a reverb. And very nice is also this XY pad. So the first thing you should do is loading some sounds, listen to them and see what the XY pad is doing to get a better feeling for this plugin. But maybe then the next point you want to do is you want to control, for example, the cutoff. This is very easy. Just right click on this knob and say learn MIDI CC. And now you have to send something, some MIDI controller from your DAW or from your keyboard. I use here my modulation wheel and immediately I'm using the modulation wheel. You see here what I'm doing. Uh, I am moving the cutoff. Very easy. Let's remove this again. Again, right click and here you have remove the MIDI automation. Later I will show you how to program your own macros and then maybe you want to change the name. Simply click on the name and then you get a list with the macro labels that you can use. So you can say what I did is not a cut off, it's some kind of color for example. And now it says color. This is just a label for you to remember what the, what the knob is doing. So, but let's get a little bit deeper into Ashlight. Um, we have here five pages 
And the first page is the perform page where you can load sounds and control them with the macros, what we already did. On the second page, you can edit the grain sound, means the granular synthesis sound. On the third page, you can edit the sample sound. Remember, we have here grain and sample. So here you can edit grain, here you can edit sample. We have an effect page where you can load effects to the um, grain sound and to the sample sound and on global we have some master effects uh, that we can use and we can define what the XY pad is doing. In addition, when you are on page 2 to 5, means when you're not on the perform page, then you find here three frames, I would call it, the send FX. This is where you can send, in addition to your effects, to an extra delay and reverb. Right? Uh, and you can send just from the sample to the delay and the reverb and from the grain. Uh, you can here control the macros and here you have the modulation page where you find the LFO and the shaper and some other cool stuff that I will explain you a little later. So let's dive in. We are coming from the perform page and we go to the second page, the grain page, or maybe we start with the sample page. I think it's better because this is a little bit more easy. So we mute the grain so we just hear the amp. Uh, the, the, sorry, the sample. And um, if I click one key, we hear many notes and this is because the app is on. So if I don't want to hear the arpeggiator, short the app, I turn it off. Now we just hear the sample. Uh, the first thing I can do is I can change the uh, offset, means the start point. I can start here at the end. Or I can go to the beginning. Or I can use the envelope. Um, for example, the attack time. So this is like a fade in. What is happening if I click the key? It's fading in with 300 milliseconds, 500. Or it's coming immediately. Also the release time. If I go down with the release time, What is happening if I release the key? And here I can set the sustain level and the decay time, for example, to make the sound a little shorter or more punchy. All right. We also have a filter modulation, but first we come to the filter. Here we can use some filters, low pass, high pass. Um, that's something we can change here. Let's go to low pass for pole or high pass for pole. Uh, or a band pass filter. Let's go back to the low pass filter. Let's go down with the filter. Give a little resonance. And now we control it here with the envelope. Can make it short, give it a little attack, or we listen again without filter. I prefer it with uh, some, maybe this is too much, but a little bit. Okay, so what else do we have? We have pitch. Uh, with uh, command click or uh, control click, we go back to the middle. Fine tuning or tune, sorry, no, this is tune. Um, go back. And we have the arpeggiator. Let's turn it on. We can go from 8th to 16th. So I go click and go up. Give a little swing.
I play two notes. Um, here we go to different modes up. Let's add another octave. Or we go to down, up and down, etc. etc. And you can make a much bigger size. So you can go up to 32 steps. Maybe we make something like 16. Uh, or let's make the 32. That's, uh, could be interesting. So it's easy to have a lot of fun with. That's the sample. And you also can load different samples by clicking here. That's something you also can do on the perform page. I forgot in the beginning. If you click here, you can change the sample you are using. If you click here, you can change the grain sound. You get an own browser just for the grain sounds that are part of your complete sound. Okay, let's go to the grain. So we hear just now the grain and now we go here to this page. Here we can control the grains and the cursor. How big is the interval? How big is the size? You can control the range so we can say I just want to hear this error. And yes, you can pitch it. And you can control the volume here. And we also have an envelope here. So the grain, the sample, let's go to the effects. We have four effects for the sample and four effects for the grain. And I click on the first effect of the sample and now I click here th these dots. And I can say I don't want to hear the DIN dynamic. I want to hear a drive. And now... Ah, sorry, we don't hear the sample, that's the problem. Let's turn on the sample. You can turn on and off the effect that is selected here. You can load presets or go through them with these errors here. And then you can go to the second effect and can say, no, I don't want to hear a cue. I want on the second effect to hear a delay. Let's turn it off again. That's how you control the effect. The same you can do with the grain. We go to global and here you have four effects that are on the master means on the grain and on the sample. Let's take a look to what we have here. We have here three pages. Let's start with the Sand FX. And if you don't see them, maybe you are here in the perform mode. Here in the perform mode, you don't see them. So we go to, for example, the grain or the global. Then you should see this here. And um, here on the Sand FX, you can turn on here the reverb and send from the sample to the reverb. You can change here the parameters, load different presets, and the same for the grains. And you can also use the delay. Let's turn it on. Oh. All right. Let's go to the macros. Here you can uh, 
say I want to at the moment this is doing a filter but maybe you want to hear something else maybe you want to control the pitch of the sample so let's go to the sample page and here we can detune the sample and on all these knobs you have here this letter and here you can say I want to control with A this is A macro this is B, C and D. So I want to control with A the tuning. How much you have to use the slider to tell the system how much you want to control the pitch. And now... So maybe now the name color is not good anymore. Maybe we change it to... What do we have? Um, tuning. Because now the tuning is more important than the filter. But still the filter is also working. So this is pretty cool. That's how you can control the macros, right? And you also can use here these modulation things like the LFO. You know what the LFO is doing? This is doing a movement that can be very slow or also faster and maybe we want to control now the tuning with the LFO. So instead of saying here we want to use a macro, we go here to the LFO L1. So now the LFO is controlling the tuning. And I can set here Sorry, I can set here how fast the frequency. And you can use different modes. So, if, for example, a triangle that is just uh, or, what, uh, or a ramp is maybe interesting. A ramp is just going up and then it jumps down. Also very interesting concept is the shaper. With the shaper you can say I don't want to go linear up like this. I want to go up and down and up and down. So and here we go just to the middle. So you can do crazy stuff like this. And um, we say now the L1, the LFO1 is the input. So you also could use the macro for example. But we go now to LFO1. So the LF1 goes into the shaper and the pitch that it was controlled by the LFO is now controlled by the first shaper because you have two shapers and they also could look different, <laughs> different like this. So now we would do it like this. So. And now let's see what is happening. LFO is going up. Let's make it faster. So crazy things you can do here to have a lot of fun. I created a YouTube playlist for you with all my videos for Complete 14. You find the link to this playlist in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Always stay creative. Cheers! We at Mugent have been working hard to create a new plugin that is more musical than anything else out there. We are thrilled to present the Mugent Player. Each instrument in the Mugen player comes with a composition. MIDI files you just drag and drop into your session, so you can be inspired not only by a sound, but also by an exciting melody or characteristic chord progression. All of our instruments and MIDI files can be downloaded from the cloud. This means that every time you open the plugin, there might just be a new patch or a new MIDI file waiting for you. Simply double-click to load it into your plugin. 
In addition to the individual instruments, the Mugen player also has kits. These are arrangements that sound like a complete song. With a single click, you can load all the patches, and as soon as you've dropped the MIDI files into your DAW, you can start using them to create something new. But the most incredible thing is, the basic version of Mugen Player is free. Click on the link in the video description to get the Mugen Player. In it, you will find a large selection of instruments, MIDI files, and kits that you can download for free and start using right away. Get the Mugen Player now and create music inspired by great sounds and compositions. Mugent to make music.